In this video, I am going to talk about the contingent valuation technique, sometimes called the stated preference technique. The contingent valuation technique is a method where the sample population is asked about their willingness to pay for the improvement of environmental quality or their willingness to accept compensation if there is an environmental loss. For example, suppose there is waste at a show nearby and there are people who live there. Individuals who are living there might be asked about their willingness to pay for the removal of that waste. Or maybe, suppose a company uh, wants to build a dam in a wilderness area, there are animals there which are valued. Individuals living nearby might be asked about their willingness to accept compensation for the loss of that wilderness area because of the building of the dam, or maybe for the displacement of the animals or the people that are living there. The contingent valuation technique can be conducted in five steps. The first step, well, of course, is to prepare a survey. So researchers can prepare a survey, they can prepare questionnaires, they can also prepare a hypothetical situation that they can relate to people to ask them about their willingness to pay or their willingness to accept compensation. In fact, it is at this stage where researchers have to decide whether they are going to um, look for the willingness to pay or the willingness to accept compensation. The second step is that they are now going to use a survey on a sample. So, um, they are going to select a sample population, not the entire population. They are just going to select um, certain individuals, uh, just a group of people who are going to make up a sample who will represent the population. So they are going to use that survey on those. They are going to ask them certain questions about their willingness to pay or could be their willingness to accept compensation for any loss. The third step is that the researchers, after they get their responses, they are going to analyze and then they are going to work out the average willingness to pay or the average willingness to accept compensation. After they do that, they are going to apply that average to the population. They are going to work out the total. That just involves uh, multiplying the average with the population of the entire area. And then finally, researchers now are going to work out a sensitivity analysis. That is, um, they are going to work out how willingness to pay or willingness to accept compensation changes when there are changes in the circumstances of the population. Suppose maybe there are income changes or demographic changes or socioeconomic changes. If there are those changes, they are going to find out how the willingness to pay or willingness to accept compensation is going to change when there are those changes. The contingent valuation technique sometimes can suffer from a lot of potential biases. Sometimes the responses can be biased. Let me talk about some of the biases that, uh, that result from the contingent valuation technique. The first bias is called strategic bias. Strategic bias is a kind of bias where respondents, that is the people who are being asked questions, respondents are going to give responses just to influence a certain outcome. So they're going to give responses just to influence a certain outcome. They might not give responses according to how they feel themselves. They're just going to give responses just to influence a certain outcome. Then there is information bias. Sometimes respondents might give wrong information or they can give incomplete information that can that can result in producing in that can result in producing bias results from the contingent valuation technique. And then there is also hypothetical bias. 
Under contingent valuation technique, researchers can come up with a hypothetical situation that they can relate to people so that they come the people they respond on their willingness to pay or their willingness to accept if there is an environmental loss or improvement in environmental quality. But then the problem is that the responses that the respondents can give for that hypothetical situation may be different from the responses they would actually give if what happened uh, in that hypothetical situation actually happened. So, for example, say researchers are giving a scenario of where a ship came and then leaked oil. How much would people pay? Well, people would give responses according to that hypothetical situation. But then, suppose a ship actually came and then leaked oil nearby where they live. Those responses they give in that hypothetical situation might be different from the responses they would actually give if that ship really leaked oil. Another bias is starting point bias. Under this technique, researchers will give respondents a range of prices that they can choose from. But then, uh, respondents um, can give responses according to the initial prices that they are given by the researchers. They cannot give responses according to other prices that they are given by the researchers. And then another problem with contingent valuation is that the the average that is gotten for willingness to pay might be different with the average that is gotten for willingness to accept. So there is a discrepancy between willingness to accept and willingness to pay. Maybe willingness to pay might be might be higher than willingness to accept. So those are the potential biases that contingent valuation suffers from. So this is where I end. Thank you very much for watching.